Hello, Reptile Entrepreneurs. This is your host, Bill Strand. And today, we're going to continue our discussion about 3D printing. You remember way back in episode one when I had David Brahms on, and we talked about what kind of things he was designing and building for the Green Tree Python community. Well, I knew that that was only the tip of the iceberg of the story of 3D printing in the reptile community, and that we would be revisiting that topic. And today we do just that. Today I bring you a conversation with Eddie Garabito, also known as Father Blue on Instagram. Eddie works extensively with Blue Tree Monitors and has 3D printing to help him design products specifically for his Blue Tree Monitor cages. He's also starting to manufacture those products for the monitor communities. So here we have someone who's using 3D printing to serve his niche community. Eddie, welcome to the podcast. What's going on, y'all? Thank you. Thank you for having me so much. Well, Eddie, I really want to hear from you as to what your journey was uh, in starting off with 3D printing. Uh, let's start off with just uh, feeling that there was a need. Uh, to explain what you do, uh, what you do in the reptile community, and what that point was where you said, hey, I need to do something that doesn't exist. Well, uh, as you told like everybody earlier, I work specifically with uh, monitors at the moment, um, and, and particularly blue tree monitors uh, are the species of, of animals that I keep. Uh, I have seven of, seven of them total at the moment, um, and I'm trying to start like a little breeding group project this year with those guys. Um, and what kind of led me into the world of like 3D printing with the monitor lizards was finding out ways of like, you know, making particular hides and also feeding implements for them. Uh, the biggest thing with tree monitors is that specifically is that they're very like uh, reclusive animals, very sensitive, very shy. So they don't like to eat out in the open. And um, mm. and it's very hard for me to kind of keep track of how much a particular animal is eating, uh, whether it's eating and things like that, you know, and, and me letting go of a, a couple crickets here and there, uh, you know, that can only be so successful, you know, because I don't know if the, if the animal is eating them, if the, if they're escaping, if they're, if they're dying in the enclosure, et cetera, et cetera. Cause I keep all my enclosures bioactive as well. So there's a lot of like different variables that can, that, you know, they're hard to control with these animals particularly uh, another big reason was that when i was keeping crickets or feeding them crickets i would have so many crickets to escape in my home <laughs> and i hated that to be quite honest, yeah. you know <laughs> so so i needed to find a way that could I, I can um feed my lizards um and give them water as well and you know that kind of brought onto this de this idea of making these uh little feeder holders uh meaning made you know by 3d printing i found like a, a a typical deli cup and mm -hmm. if i had one right here i'd show you uh, but i i'd have a, a, a normal size deli cup and i was able to uh, make this holder that i could just put a deli cup in and i had variable sizes of deli cups I, I'll, I'll get some in a second to show you but guys but i have like very tall ones very short ones and medium size so i can feed water and everything like that and the big ones i use for cricket keeping and i'm able to put a cup, couple crickets in there they're not able to jump out and i can see that my monitor is eating them Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So that's kind of what got me into that whole realm, you know, was to make sure that my mm -hmm. monitors could eat. I did the project, I posted online, and I had so many people uh, in the community love it, you know, and to the point where they were like asking me to order them out. I've shipped so far to various places in the U.S. There's a guy in France who actually took the idea and had like kind of recreated it, and he's using the kind of similar product as well. So it's it's exciting, and then like the ideas that have come up since then. Have just blossomed so i have so many other projects in the work right now you know <laughs> kind of dealing with the same thing uh, they created a monster there yeah. <laughs> uh, just, uh, for my curiosity how does these uh these feeder cups how do they attach and where do they attach so i i i, I attach them they're they're a simple they're a simple little kind of uh mount that has three holes in the back that you could just screw into like any type of wall or branch okay. or ledge anything like that so i made them pretty you know universal you know, I, I, ha I did mess around with putting suction cups and things like that. I, I just don't trust it too much. I'd rather have it screwed into a, a, a fixture. That way it won't move or anything like that. So okay. That's what I've been using at the moment, yeah. All right. So you had a need, 
and then you decided to use 3D printing. And so this is going to be the crux of what we're going to talk about is how did you get started with 3D printing and uh, just help us uh, go through the steps of uh, getting a 3D printer and learning how to use it, because that's the big thing that uh, people are intimidated by. Right, right. So my journey, I started 3D printing probably like five years, five, six years ago. So I was kind of like in the infancy of when 3D printers were just booming out. And so there wasn't a lot of help or resources back then. It was kind of like you join an online forum and everyone's talking with each other and saying, hey, like, this is my 3D printer. These are my settings. Let's work together and make these things work, you know? And uh, so I had a large learning curve. Like I bought my first 3D printer with the intentions of trying to build uh, bike frames because I worked in the bicycle <laughs> wow. industry. Yeah. And back then I worked in the bike bicycle industry and I'm a tall guy. I'm like six foot three and it's hard to find bike frames my size. So I came up with the idea of, of designing and making my own out of carbon fiber, but using 3D printers to get me to that goal. Um, so I bought my first 3D printer. It was like at the time, like a thousand dollars and it was a kit that I had to assemble myself. And then after I assembled it, I then had to like program the 3D printer online and figure out different settings and then tune it and all this other, it, that was such like a mess honestly went up <laughs> back in the day, but, but I got it working and then finally made my bike frames. And then, you know, luckily for me, I had these tools that I, you know, that I used for one project to help me in this project over here. Nowadays it's so, it's so much simpler. You can buy printers that are already made, they're already working. You just press a button and they're, they're, they're shooting out whatever you want to shoot out, you know, and making them real quickly. So that's the cool thing about that stuff now compared to then. Well, yeah, let's uh, talk about that actual software because, uh, I mean, you say software and people think, oh, do I have to program and you have to design? What software do you use and what was the learning curve? So it's the software for designing items that uh, that I use are as I, I use a couple different things I use a uh, fusion 360 and SolidWorks um I was in school for mechanical engineering so I kind of had access to SolidWorks is which where I use which is a little bit more of a it's a, if you don't know what SolidWorks is is a program used to design 3D models of you know everyday items so anything from like a toothbrush all the way to a, a submarine engine. If you're good at designing okay. that well, you know, so you can make a lot of things with these, with, with this program. And, um, I, you know, I, I jumped in head first kind of learning, you know, how to do this and how to, cause even when I was in school, I wasn't messing with that. I just had access to it. And it wasn't until like later on in my years that I just started messing around, but I, I YouTubed a lot of, of, of tutorials, you know, of how to like, how do I make this shape? How do I do this? My first endeavor and like what really got me into it was, um, when I first got the 3d printer, I told myself that I need to make one project, choose one project and design and make it so that I can feel confident making everything else that I want to do and kind of learn how to right. use the software. So I chose to make a phone case for my iPhone at the time and it worked and I, it was a phone case that I can put on my bicycle uh, and it worked. And then from there I gained the yeah. confidence to kind of learn how to do everything else. But YouTube really helped me out. Every question that I had, that stuff, I, I, I pray to everybody that, you know, for whoever brought YouTube to us, cause it's, <laughs> it's been a godsend to be quite honest, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, how long did it take before you were able to make your first product? I, I would say with with uh, with SolidWorks, it probably took me about uh, through two to three months to learn it, you know, fluently so that I can knew. So I learned how to, like, be able to change dimensions and change forums and uh, and things like that. And to kind of learn the basic parameters of how to make something not necessarily look nice but i could make it and then later on make it look nice so um yeah i'd say like i said two to three months with the stuff that i'm making now and and i think with with the stuff that people you know that might be interested in the stuff for what we're doing we're making pretty basic i would say you know items like these holders and mm -hmm. these like little hides and things like that they're pretty basic shapes and as long as you learn how to like manipulate those pretty easily you know with the software I'm, I'm, anyone can get into this very easily and 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 you know, get their feet wet with it for sure. Well, I've seen both of uh, the holders and the, uh, the well, there's a laying box that you're working on now. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a new project. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the holders look pretty simple. That laying box looks 
pretty complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it is it as complicated as it looks? And I'll I'll get a picture and I'll uh, I'll yeah, put it yeah. up for those so, who watching. So it is it is a little bit it, because I'm I'm doing different. Uh, you know, I'm doing kind of uh, what's it called a um. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the word is. I'm doing like a live geomet geometrical shape. So you, it's not a shape that a computer can easily make all those lines and those divots and bumps, kind of the texture that I have. So what I did with the program was design the, the fundamental shape of it, which was like an egg with an entrance hole. And then I imported that into another software. Uh, and then I can control how dense or how many holes I want it to create that pattern or that, that texture you see on the outside. So it's a completely different software that I use that then helps me make the organic. That was the word I was using, the organic forum that you see, the final product of it. Uh, so uh, you're doing two software programs here. Right, right, yeah. Now, at that point, to making those complex, to, to making the complex shapes and stuff like that, yeah. Okay, so is that what you mean when you say to make it look nice? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, okay. no, no. So because it depends. So like when I'm when I build like the holders – when you see the, the the basic design for the holders, it's a circle with a hole in the middle. And then you would think it's just a round circle. And then on for the edges that hold on to the wall, it's just a square block so, yep. or a rectangle block with yep. some holes in it. Uh, and in that program, SolidWorks, I could do things like bevel the edges. I could make the edges round. You know, I can put like okay. – um, I can already make like kind of like a surface finish on it to make it look smooth. It's not all blocky. Uh, when I'm talking, so that's what I'm talking about making it look like. So I'll fillet the edges and things like that. Fillet the edges to make them look nice. And um, this pro this other program is completely different. It's a it's a program meant to help you do that organic free forum, attach one item to another item that wasn't previously there. Mm -hmm. It's just a, mm -hmm. a different type of software. And that one's called Mesh Mixer. So if, so, if, so if anybody's interested in it, it's a pretty easy software to use, but it helps you with final 3D forms, you know? Well, you you mentioned that you were uh, studying, was it mechanical engineering, you said? Yeah, yeah, mechanical engineering. With a, I was trying to go with a, a study in composites, so carbon fiber and things like that. I had a lot of interest in that sort of thing. So how much of that helped you learn how uh, learn how to use this software? None of it. None of it. To be honest. Okay. None of it. Yeah. yeah so, no. Mechanical engineering was learning more through the formulas of like, you know, how how for what I was doing with the composites was like how to make sure that resins were interacting with other stuff and things like that. It was nice. It was cool. It's a lot of science, a lot of math, but that had nothing to do. YouTube was literally my savior. Okay. So <laughs> any any reptile breeder yes. out there right now, you're saying could with the help of YouTube. Uh, figure figure this out 100 percent, 100 percent. i i i give i 100 percent confident that anybody with the time and uh the you know the, the resources you know which is to buy your first 3d printer yeah. and jumping in it 100 percent could and there's so many okay. people in the 3d printing community which is so lucky that 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 make files and share them as well so there's a plethora of things you can print out and make for yourself if you wanted to you know okay what 3d printer what model uh do you use Okay, so my 3D printers are completely custom. Uh, so I kind of I started with a base product, which was called at the at the at the time it was a CME CNC Rostock Max, which was like a thousand dollar printer. It was like wood with metal arms and everything else was plastic. And um, from upgrading that and upgrading it and having all these specialty builders making parts from it, I have printers now that are like fully metal. Fully rigid, very precise. They're controlled by Wi-Fi. I can control them with my phone. I can see everything there. So they're again, I, I kind of built them myself, and the, the they're no longer controlled by the same boards. I programmed those boards completely myself. So I went a different route because I already had this stuff. But the 99% of people, I would say, don't need to do that. Printers now okay. come already made already programmed with with information on them that works at a click of a button now compared to the stuff that i do you know are you familiar with what is commercially available right now enough to give us a recommendation as to yes. what to look for yeah i would if there anything that if there's a 3d printer that i'd recommend uh the prusa anything made by prusa they're a little bit expensive okay. but those are like literally out of the box printers you put them out they're good or you can go to another brand is called lowe's bot uh, they make one of these called like the Taz 4, Taz 6, something like that. But okay. those 3D printers are like 
like I said, they're ready to go. No need to do anything crazy. They're self bed leveling everything. Very easy to use and uh, very precise as well for the stuff that we're doing and making. They might not give you big volume. Like mine, are, my printers are pretty big, so they can 3D print, you know, relatively large items. But those will at least get you started in that realm okay. to see where you feel comfortable with. Okay, uh, let's let's go uh, jog on over and talk about you your budding business now. Uh, so you say you make these for other people. Uh, where would you say you are as far as developing a business around this? I, you know, I'm at the the early stages of it because it wasn't until recently that I've been like very more outgoing with promoting the the product and and you know so I've been using it and developing it for the past two to three years now the holders specifically and um and, and through the years I've had people in my community see my, me making them and and want to buy them so I've sold to a ton of people already which is nice uh and I have some pretty big names using them which is cool as well um but it's it was only so recently where people were like hey I, you know, more and more people have started getting into the monitors now, which is cool. And they've yep. been asking, looking, looking for solutions of how to feed them and how to water them. And, you know, seeing this product that I make has definitely made a big boom in people ordering. So, so it's growing a lot right now, which is making me, you know, think of other things that I can make, you know, which has led to the, which led to the hide or the nest box that I'm developing. I'm also developing little hides as well. And um, 3D printed perches because I want to get, I don't keep green tree pythons or, you know, or, or, or tree boas, but seeing the stuff those guys are making, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff that can be made for the, for the reptile community. So at this point, uh, where would somebody find you if they wanted to find you? Uh, right now it's Instagram or or on Facebook. I'm on Facebook on like almost every single reptile page to be quite okay. honest. Even if I don't keep it, I'm on that page. But uh, you can find me on Facebook at Eduardo Garabito. Uh, and then on, on Instagram, I have my Blue Tree Monitor page, which is uh, Father Blue. And Blue, it's spelled B-L-O-U, uh, which is French for blue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's talk about your future. What aspirations do you have for this uh, 3D printing? Well, I mean, I, you know, unfortunately because of, you know, COVID, a lot of things are slow, you know, so I'm not able to like really showcase the, the items that I have in person, but I tend to, I like, I, I'm looking to like really wrap up this entire business in making a lot of specialty products for people. You know, I had someone reach out to me just this morning asking if I can make them a holder that was bigger, as big as I could make it. And uh, apparently he wants to make a kind of a, a floating tray that he can have his, you know, his snakes kind of submerge their bodies in, but suspended. Sure. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I can definitely help you out with that, you know? So, uh, and this guy was in Europe. I'm not sure exactly where, but, um, but yeah, so I want to grow it as much as I can and kind of start pumping these holders out, having more design ideas. You know, when you saw my, you seeing my uh, the 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 nest box that I made yep. that made a lot of buzz in my community because a lot of people were like wow this is this is crazy like you're gonna make a nest box that's heated that's suspended that looks kind of natural I was like you know a lot of people didn't even know that 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 you know the inspiration was from termite mounds people didn't mm -hmm. even know there was termite mounds in trees and I was <laughs> like I was like yeah this is where I got I, I didn't come out from my head but yeah here it goes show them pictures and that was super excited you know i had i have like some really serious tree monitor breeders here in the u.s who when they saw the project they were like dude like we've been thinking of how to make this thing for years and we just had no idea how to make it you know how to get it heated and and how to suspend it up there without it like falling apart on us and and so yeah it was super it was super exciting to see that there was such a need for these little niche products and it's just yeah it's led me to like really expand like i literally just placed an order to get three more printers and saw it, and that's gonna make i have four already just so that i have enough printers to be able to pump out whatever i need in the time that i need to make it you know yeah when i saw your drawings for that uh, that monitor laying box that excited me because that is serious innovation there serious uh inventing uh, for a need. And that is exactly what this podcast is all about. Uh, and so I definitely wanted you to come on and share that process and uh, let people know that you got an idea, you have a need for your special species. Uh, look into 3D printing. There are people out there who are doing it. 
Yeah. And uh, and uh, Eddie is <laughs> Eddie's showing uh, how he's <laughs> doing it for the monitor, <laughs> the the monitor world. So, uh, so say you're uh, you're making you're making this product and you're continuing to develop. Uh, what do you suppose your next steps are going to be as far as growing the business? Well, marketing for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Going in, going in person to different shows. You know, I, I want to get a presence and and kind of my face out there so people can know that hey, this is the guy keeping blue tree monitors and and does the 3D printing stuff. You know, and he. I want people to know, uh, you know, that these products exist because mm -hmm. I don't think that a lot of people do. You know, there are people who you know who frequent the the little forum niches that we're in. But a lot of times we're trapped in those niches and we don't see yes. what other people are doing, right. you know, you know, and I like I didn't I only found out about the other the other gentleman who's doing 3D printing. I forget his name. Um, David. He does, yeah, he, he does the 3D printing for green trees. I only found out about him two weeks ago, you know, or, or when, before like two weeks before you posted your podcast. I didn't even know there was another guy doing this stuff. Hmm. And when I saw that, I was like. Whoa, dude! Like that's that's crazy. I'm over here. I've been doing this for a couple years now, and there's another guy in this niche. Who knows what other people are doing in their little niches, you know? And so I want to like figure out a way of how to get involved in all of them, you know, and kind of and and express to people like, hey, here are items that Zoomed that you know all these other big companies aren't making, and we have access to you know to to the to the tools to make them for you to make your reptiles life a little bit better you know so yeah and 3d printing allows us to do that and that's why i'm so excited <laughs> I, i'm going to be doing yeah. more episodes yeah, yeah. As, as i'm finding more and more people in these niches who are using 3d printing and uh, i'm going to bring them up and put them on the podcast and yeah. let people know that's a an incredible tool that's available to us and now, are you going to be also uh, breeding and selling blue tree monitors? That's my goal uh, right now. I'm I'm establishing my group. I have seven with a total of four females and three males. Uh, I do have one male out on a breeding loan with another uh, partner of mine who's probably like one of the most prolific breeders here in the U.S. Uh, and I'm also getting in another male to join with my group uh, from a friend of mine, um, so we can kind of just like sp spread out you know, bloodlines, but my goal isn't necessarily to sell them because I, I probably don't want to sell any of the blue tree <laughs> monitors that I, that I have. Uh -huh. uh, my goal is kind of to establish them a little bit more regularly here in the U S and then I want to partner up with different, you know, zoological kind of programs and see if I can get my monitors into their groups and helping okay. them set them up. So that's what I want to do. You know, I want to kind of reach that Avenue and just, have them here in captivity and, and producing as much as we can. Cause I don't know if very much, you know, programs where they're breeding them successfully here in the U S in the zoological field, in the private field, we're breeding them all day long, you know, but mm -hmm. I have so many friends that are coming up with clutches every year, every, every couple of months. But yeah, that's my goal with that for the most part. Okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's bring this back around to that 3d printing and somebody's listening to this podcast right now oh, and saying, awesome. you know what? That is what I want to do. So uh, from your perspective, can you help this person guide them step by step as to how they should get started from, from ground zero? Uh, they just have an idea. What are the steps they should take to actually holding the thing in their hand? Knowing like with, with let's, let's pretend that this person already has a 3d printer, you know, with the recommendations that I gave earlier, uh, start off with a 3d printer after that, um, if you don't know how to use like basic uh, design software or anything like that, it's pretty easy to learn. The, the learning curve is, is is a little steep at the beginning, but once you get to the basics, it's pretty easy to learn after that. But I always start with a drawing, an actual you know, pencil and paper drawing and kind of get numbers and dimensions down that I want to know. I want to make it this big. I want the circle to look like this. And from there, it's very easy to create parts after you have those, you know, beginning numbers and lines and drawings because you that's what you're doing when you're designing anyways you're drawing a circle a line and then you're making it into a forum and then you're manipulating it somehow so yeah draw always start off with a drawing with the dimensions what the overall outlook you know the overall finished product you want it to look like looks like 
plug it into your software. I would recommend using a software like Fusion 360, which is free for students or anybody who wants to learn this and isn't making a ton of money off of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that that program alone has so many resources in terms of tutorials, uh, information. They have a help desk for people that you can call and say, hey, I need help on on this thing. Can you help me out? And they're more than happy to help you out with that sort of thing, you know? Um, so using a program like that to design your product after that, throw it into a 3D printer. You know, if you have the 3D printer, kind of learn how to use it from, you know, YouTube, because that's like kind of the greatest thing in the mm -hmm. world. Uh, and that, that'll, that'll teach you how to like get started, what what temps you need for for your heat bed or the material that you're going to use, what it what it needs to be able to, you know, be able to be created. Um and then, yeah, you, that's kind of the basic steps to it. You know, I wouldn't say that it's, it's very much hard, harder than that. If I were starting off, I would do the same thing, you know? All right. Is there anything we should uh, be concerned about as far as materials being used inside of reptile cages, uh, like any toxins or anything we should watch out for? See, that's, that is one of the biggest things that does come up with uh, the 3D printing uh, for the most part, where a lot of people are worried about how the materials that are used in 3d printing aren't necessarily food safe, you know? So okay. there, there are, there are people who, who have, who, who talk about how there are potentials for release of nanoparticles from 3d printing and things like that, that could be introduced. Um, I use, I use PLA, which is from my understanding, you know, a plant-based kind of, uh, plastic that is extruded mm -hmm. and made into the, into what it is made from like cornstarch and things like that for the most part. And, I've never had an issue in the in the past couple years uh, using this product, and that's what the majority of other people that I've met 3D printing animal products are using as well. Um, the one thing with that product is that it doesn't take heat relatively, relatively, you know, well. So, okay. you know, but as long as you make something dense enough, uh, it'll be just fine. Like my holders that I make. I make them pretty dense to the point where I can put them on a basking, you know, zone of like 130 degrees Celsius and they won't melt, you know, or anything like that. So, okay. or yeah. All right. How long does it take to make one of those holders? My holders, when I started out, it used to take about four hours to print one of those guys. When I first started it, now with my printers being the way that they are now, I can bust them out in like 35 minutes. Okay. Per holder, yeah. And with this uh, this high uh, laying box, and for the podcasting people, go ahead and explain this laying box that we're talking about. What does it look oh, like, and what are the yeah. features of it? That is that is one of my coolest projects that I'm working on right now. So the lay box, uh, as we were talking earlier, kind of developed from the idea of seeing uh, 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 what's it called a uh, termite mounds termite in mount. the trees. Yeah, termite mounds in the trees, and uh, and there's been this ongoing thing about how there are various monitor species and lizard species and other animals that go into these termite mounds, empty ones or living ones. And they tend to nest inside of there because of the controlled environment that's kind of given to them inside of these mounds. Um, and so I developed this, I'm developing this, 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 this thing where it looks almost like a circular egg that has a big entrance hole on the top of it. And uh, it's going to have a heat, heat mat incorporated into the bottom of it uh to keep it you know nice and toasty for whatever animal decides to use it um and then it has this this texture on the outside that are like literally thousands of little holes going through it in a way to allow any like excess water to drain mm. through the the actual uh the hide and the reason why is because i use misting systems in all my cages and so i don't, wouldn't want these things to be waterlogged or anything like that so i need them okay. to be able to drain uh but the cool thing about the hide is that it's also going to be incorporated in the back of it a clip system which allows me to basically mount a bracket to any wall or any branch and i can mount multiple of these brackets and then i'll be able to have this hide just clip in place into these brackets and I'll be able to move them wherever I want throughout the cage. If I need to, if one location isn't working out, I can move it over here and over there. Um, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, since the development of that project and me kind of posting it out on the internet, I've been reached out by multiple people who are like this, this thing would be amazing for ball pythons, green tree monitors. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, green tree pythons, like, so many animals to list that you know people have taken interest in the project and are following it. You know, so I'm yeah, really I think you have that. something there. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited with that one for sure. Do you have any idea how much more development time you have on that? Oh, it's pretty much like in terms of like the, the, the design is done. I'm already finished with it. I already have the, the heat mats incorporated. I was able to find these like source out these really small circular heat pads are like about that big. I would say it's probably like, I don't know, seven, eight inches around in diameter. Okay. Uh, and I was able to create the sleeve where they just slide right into the back of it. Um, they have like a little a, a channel for the cord to go through. So it looks pretty nice. Um, yeah, at, at this point, it's just me getting the time to 3D print it only because I'm 3D printing so many of the of the of the feeder holders and stuff that I don't have time to use my printers to 3D print <laughs> that thing. <laughs> well, it's good news that you're getting that much business. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, well, I'm very excited to uh, see that hide and uh, where you go with this. Uh, did you envision this getting large enough that it becomes a substantial side business or even a full-time job? Yes, a hundred percent. And for years I've, I've had the, the idea to do something similar, but I just didn't really think that it was needed at the time up until recently, right. you know, and it wasn't until that, like, you know, again, I don't know what it was that happened. Maybe it was that I started a, a, a an Instagram kind of showcasing my monitors because I wasn't very public with what I was keeping. I was on the forums. I was like, hey, here goes my animals. Nice to meet you guys. Like what you're doing. That was pretty much it. And uh, up until a couple of months ago, I started the page for my Blue Tree monitors. And so people could see how I'm keeping them. And I have these really big – like I can show you here. Like you can see one of them right there. It's a really – it's like a seven-foot tall – by four foot by two foot enclosure that I have mm. a pair of monitors in. And so when people started seeing what I was doing here, they were like, whoa, this is cool. And then started asking like, whoa, what are you feeding your animals? How are you feeding them? And that just took off. So I'm excited for that. And that's, that really pushed me to saying, Hey, yeah, I can definitely turn this into a business and I can definitely turn this into something substantial that could possibly, you know, keep me from having to do a nine to five and just do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to ask the questions. I kind of know the answer to it, but I'd like to hear it in your words. Is that something that you want and why? Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like I would love to be more involved in the reptile hobby, you know, for so long, this was just a hobby for me. You know, it mm -hmm, was just something mm -hmm. that I do on the, I love these animals. I want to make sure they're living their best you know, lives that I'm capable of giving them. And this would just allow me to be a little bit more closer into that, you know, innovating different products. You know, right now it's starting with feeder holders and hides and who knows what the potential is next, you know, that I can develop for these animals or for any animal. Uh, and so I'm really excited for that, for that potential future, you know, like I have so many ideas in my head, you know, from various feeding things that like I'm developing right now, uh, 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 almost like an automated cricket, cricket keeper that can feed my animals so that if the potential that I'm gone, I can have, I can set up a tub on the top of their cage that has a tube that has crickets and, you know, using the same programming that I use to program my printer, I can open a hatch, have crickets fall into a cup, close the hatch automate that you know from wherever i am like that's just one of the ideas that i have for my and I, yeah it's the potentials are the future is exciting for this stuff to be quite honest yeah it sounds like it and i'm going to be excited <laughs> to follow along i'll definitely be on that instagram account it is uh father dot blau or is it blue blau how blue, do you yeah, pronounce blue. that blue I, so. I just pronounce it blue yeah <laughs> okay so even though it's french we call it blue right? yeah. <laughs> okay all right so that's a good one to watch and see how you develop this so uh well eddie this is uh is there anything else you would like to share with the audience about your journey so <laughs> anything they should look out for yeah, just uh, don't be afraid. You know, if you guys are trying to jump into 3D printing, I know it, it seems very daunting getting into this new technology that, that you know, you might have never seen or only seen on online or TV or anything like that. But it's not limited to just super smart people. You know, it, anybody can pick up a 3D printer. Anybody can, like, learn how to use it or how to design things. If you don't know how to design things, there are plethora of people online who will literally design things for you if you ask them you know because okay. it's not you know once you know it's not very hard you know so um 
join online, find a, a, a forum or page, a group that you really like, that you really vibe with, get to know those guys. And a lot of those dudes are so helpful. You have no idea. I started from not knowing a lick of anything for a 3D printer to now being able to assemble, diagnose, take care of my own and make whatever I want on any, on, you know, at any second that I want to make it. So, yeah. That is very it, cool. Yeah. All right, Eddie, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your experience and your journey. Uh, we look forward to following you as you develop this. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Like This is so, so cool. It really was. Very good to have you. Bye. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my discussion with Eddie about how he's using 3D printing to serve the monitor community. More so, I hope it inspires you to look into 3D printing and perhaps use it to serve your niche community. If you already are using 3D printing, drop me a line at bill at reptileentrepreneur.com and let me know what you've been doing. Ever since I've started talking about 3D printing, I've had people letting me know what they are doing and it is wonderful. So please, if you are using 3D printing, let me know. Thank you for joining me here, and I hope you enjoy this exploration of entrepreneurship within the reptile community, and it's time for me to get to work on that next episode. Take care of yourself, take care of our reptile community, and let's see what we can build.